Then we have the authority, the privilege, the need for putting people on social networks. So, quietly, if you don't want to be on YouTube or Facebook or Twitter <coughs> or whatever, tell Sherry and we will do everything we can to acknowledge that. We're not trying to, you know, we get the footage, we got a little flip camera going, and we'll pick up some footage, and then you think, well, I'll roll it on YouTube just to make people want to be at this thing next year, but we don't want to violate anybody's whatever. So, I know that some of you here have special situations. We, we, we understand that you will not be But if others of you don't want to be on these things, what we have historically done was use your first name and the first initial of your of your last name. So I want her back. I want her back. If you don't like that. Tell me, give me some advice right now. It's a good time because this is a bold new world. This is not my technology. <laughs> so I'm learning as I go. So we have in both men and women, first name, first letter, the last initial is all we give. Uh, I, I'm not really uh, a junkie. I like to use the stuff. I like to experiment with it. But I'm not just bam, 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 you know, the constant kind of thing. I, Terrifying, actually, because when you make a mistake, I mean, making a mistake here for you folks today is one thing, bad enough. But making a mistake in front of the whole world is something else altogether different when you, when you spill. What does it mean to throw drugs? Is that going to the world? It's bad. So the ambassador mentions that you can't get it back. So we're just trying to use this new technology, new to me, new to us, new to my generation, in, uh, in ways that's proper and keeps me keeping looking efficient, modern, desirable, or whatever. Isn't it odd that I can transmit 150-year-old information at 286,000 miles per second? <laughs> I mean, wouldn't you think we would know something new to transmit at the speed of light? This is a catch-all. This is a just before we let you go home, one last shot to be sure that loose ends are covered so much as we can. We cannot make you proficient queen rears today, queen producers today, but to soundly introduce you to it, several things happen. The next time you pay $25 for a bug, at least you'll have some idea of what some other effort somebody put into getting that bug to that point and some idea of the cost of it. Or alternatively, <coughs> produce a few queens or whatever. So, odds and ends, loose ends. I would ask that all the speakers are still here. Where are you, in fact? If you were either a speaker or a queen graft instructor, where's your hand? One, two, three, four, five in the door. Put your hand up, Gabe. Six. Thank these folks because they've worked for you all day. And we get paid nothing. We got a little grant to do this, and we barely break even on the grant with your registration and what it costs to drive back and forth wherever we've been meeting all over. So this is really a labor of love for these people that are putting it on for you. And the lady I work with, Sherry, and her son Jason's my are my technical coordinating group. Sherry technically coordinates coffee and food, and Jason technically coordinates why we can electronically get done what we wanted to do. So, even so. <laughs> why don't you raise a bunch of queens and you want to keep them for what? Weeks, months, probably keep some of them weeks or months, but not all of them. There is no standard procedure on storing. People like Simpson over here, wherever Simpson lives in Ohio. Where does he live in Ohio? Knox County. Danville. Just has he saved laying in a box on top of a queen excluder on top of his colony. He's got queens he perhaps coming in from uh, California. And he'll keep them that way for weeks on end. Sometimes he says he may have a lot of brood in those colonies. They may or may not be queen right, but they usually are queen right. And most of the time that the proper age nurse bees will move up there. These queens are not intended to live in little cages for very long. And so if you take out the workers and keep changing things around, you can make them live longer. 
So the number stored, the length of time, just to see what I could do when I was a young, young man and had a lot more time, seems like, at the University of Maryland, I systematically took the, the worker bees out, replaced them every few days, gave a measured amount of water, and I was able to keep, keep a queen in a cage for something like six or seven months, just sitting there being real bored. <laughs> so you can do bizarre things if you, if you wanted to, but it's not a natural way to do things. Obviously, the young colonies, young bees are what it takes with these hypopharyngeal glands producing all this good food that they need would be required to keep this going. <coughs> Ideally queenless, but that means you've got to parasitize something else to keep subsidizing the queenless colony. Serene surface is readily accessible to the caged bees, abundant food stores. You expect some queen deaths. I wrote that years ago, obviously, because you can expect a lot of queen deaths. <laughs> I'm going to keep a few queens. This is a, one of those modern day plastic cages, pretty much gummed up with bee wax and whatever. Just lay it on the top bars near the brood nest area. If it's a bitten three hole cage, I'm trying to work on an article that was due Friday. And Flottam asked if we just make it a two or a three part series and really turn this thing into an extravaganza. But everything to come is an extravaganza. <laughs> on trying to break the code of this queen jargon thing, you know, bitten three hole cages, alley methods, uh, gender devices. We got to name something after Dana. <coughs> the Stallman steadfast technique of queen production or something. <laughs> 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 You were here when the name was first used. Because <laughs> every little gadget has a name in queen production. The little staples that hold the wire cages, they've got some kind of sophisticated name. They're uh, queen's cage staples or whatever. The Benton three-hole cage is a very common thing, and you can just flip that thing over and lay that on top and let it stay on top of the... Of the uh, frames here within a queen right colony. <coughs> now the bees will ball it up and try to kill the queen in there, but they're actually killing her with excessive heat. Not really stinging her so much. They're actually overheating <coughs> the queen and killing her. And if you've ever had the excitement to realize, whoa, they're killing that queen, who has a pan of water at that moment? <laughs> but if you've got a queen being killed by being balled up, Pick up the ball and just drop it in a pan of water and keep pushing them under water until you can make them all believe, well, I'm going to kill all of you if you don't let her go. <laughs> <laughs> but who's got a pan of water at that moment? Nobody. I did run in one day and get a pan of water. And i got to tell you, it works all right, but not great. But it does. See, by pushing her under water, you think you're drowning them and you're making her release. Well, actually, they can't produce the heat that it takes to kill the queen, so they're going to finally release her and give up on it. And then you've got a bunch of wet bees and probably a mangled up queen out of the whole deal. So they will ball that cage up and try, as though they're trying to kill the queen inside, but a few of the bees are still feeding and taking care of them and whatever. You know, I've had this thing outside. It's out in the hallway there, but do you have to go get it or not? <coughs> this is uh, an antique cage that actually survived the storm, and the, the box thing at the top did not survive the storm. Some of the techniques and devices that have been built for storing queen cages inside hives. So obviously these particular frames were not uh, commonly used, but they were custom built. And so when you buy a queen, pretty much after June the 30th, it's going to be a bank queen. In most cases, people can still raise queens. But if you buy a commercial queen after June the 30th, my birthday, certainly July the 18th. It was produced several weeks ago and has been in a banked colony, being stored, waiting for you to, to buy it. And by then, in the deep south, the nukes are, the baby nukes are hard to maintain. They're overheating, and they've already begun to shut that thing down, so they'll bank the queens and sell the bank queens then. So there's some techniques and devices, but nothing standard, once again. More. Is there any problem with bank queens? In a perfect world, you wouldn't want a bank queen to be, have been banked very long. 
Uh, you're here in Ohio and your car is cleanless and you're in a quandary. You want that clean, bank or not. So is your world perfect or imperfect? In a perfect world, no bank cleans. In an imperfect world, you're going to use bank cleans. <coughs> not a real problem. My other speakers here, this is not really my presentation. I'm just rambling. I'm just giving this over this overview. So if you got something you want to say, jump in. When you touch these queens for the first time, there's no way to learn. Jump in the deep end of the pool, figure it out. Oddly enough, in life, I really did that. And I almost drowned. <laughs> and it took me years to get the nerve back up to jump in the deep end of the pool. But now I'm happy to tell you I can swim. But when I say that now, I do think about the day that I jumped in the deep end of the pool to get my swimming certificate and almost drowned trying to get across the pool. <laughs> so just jumping in the deep end doesn't mean things are going to come out all right. So you've got to figure out some way. And yes, learn drones. They work with drones. Torment those guys because they are completely unable to do anything that punishes you for having done that. So just mark all the drones you want and turn them loose. They'll fly around all dolled up. <laughs> See if it has any better luck on letting them find a girlfriend because you've got them painted up or something. But no, work with drones. But at some point, you've got to pick that queen up and handle her and figure it out. Try to keep her by our thorax because you really have a hard time. You have to work at crushing that thorax, but you can kind of clumsily crush her abdomen. And her head's too hard to get a grip on anyway. So you catch her by both ways. You don't want honey or wax on your hands or propolis if you can help it because then the wings are all stuck together or she sticks to you. And I don't know if we do that much. We do, uh, we do mark queens fairly frequently, but I'm not sure how to help you with that right here, right now, other than the fact you just start. Where's those markers we had over here? The markers we had over here? Yeah, they're in that box. This box? <laughs> These are special B markers that we get from Uniposca. I guess they could be used for something else, but since we bought them from a B supply company, they can only be used to mark queens. <laughs> <laughs> and right here is Queen. How about to be one right here on the floor? No, she's busted. <laughs> I'll just mark my thumb out. You buy these things anywhere. <coughs> I'm going to charge you, what, a dollar and a half to do that? Yeah, a yeah, dollar and a half. See? See what expertise? See what one of class does for you? <laughs> I was uh, hearing a comment that was interesting the other day. Yellow, I can never recall the ditty. Yellow is what year? Yellow is what year? Three. 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 They said don't use yellow, use purple. Why? But yellow looks like pollen pellets. Oh. So I'd never heard that before. So if you want to give up on using yellow and go to purple because of uh, the yellow looking like a pollen pellet and throwing it off your ability to find your queen, so, so be. But get these markers. When I was a young man, you had to use Tester's model paint. Mm -hmm. And I'd break off a dowel rod, very small, blunt end, and not stick it in the bottle. It'll get way too much ink. Stick it in the cap because the cap would have a meniscus on it with a bit of paint there, and you'd have just the right depth on the cap to then stick on the thorax. But I'd, I don't know why you'd want to go back and use Tester's model paint if you can get these gadgets here that work well. I had a lot of these cages here because we would use these cages to introduce queens that were valuable to us, particularly valuable. And you can make these cages any size that you want, eight mesh hardware cloth, and what you would do is put it in over emerging brood with young two, three, ten young nurse bees there, and that was a much more friendly or friendly environment for the queen to be in when uh, the bees finally would cut under the comb. <coughs> are five, six days later, depending on how valuable she is to you, you'll pull the screen wire <coughs> off. You wanted to have a a more secure way of introducing the queen. These cages here are from California. They're stackable, and because of that scalloped cut here, when you stack them, there's always an open spot here. It's blew away in the storm. 
I don't know where I got the plan. It was not my idea. I got it from somebody else, but it was my scheme to build it. And a Benton three-hole cage lays right here very conveniently, screen side down so the bees have space to get underneath and you don't have to pull a frame out or do anything bizarre to put the Benton three-hole cage in there. So I made 25 or 30 of these things. I don't have a single one of them left. Yes, sir. I've saw commercial beekeepers on the top bar take a router and just go down that deep and halfway across the top of the top bar so the cage will fit in between fit down and butt up over next to the next frame. So you route across one one top bar or the top bar is normally that wide, you just route in like that and then the cage would fit like that. Alright. If I could ever do this fast enough. Why is my cursor doing that? Has it been doing it the whole time? Yeah. 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 Please wait. Heard that before. <laughs> I can either wait for this to warm up or I can just show you this like this. What you want to do? Here's the top bar. <coughs> Route out part of it enough that the, the cage hangs in the cell on the top bar and the other space hangs out in the space between the frames. Does that make sense? <clears throat> Not going to wait anymore. <laughs> I didn't know my cursor was doing this. Why did other speakers complain about it? Just started happening. They just went. They like you. Mm -hmm. I like me that well. Mm -hmm. Dr. Duke, give me just a second on the current slide. Yeah. Somebody said Dr. Two. Yeah. Um, Larry Connor says that on those Benton Queen cages, that you just put them in between two frames with the, and, and mash the screen against the frame on either side, but the screen is not there to allow the other bees to feed the queen. <coughs> but there's a little saw curve down each side of the, if you, if you look at the cages, there's a little saw curve down each side of the cage. And at one end, I think it's probably the non-candy end, that saw curve penetrates into, into the hole that, you know, there's the three auger holes in the, in the cage. And at one end, that curve penetrates into that hole, so there's, a, there's an opening there, and that's how the bees feed the queen inside. He says you just put it in between the frames and push the frames together, and the, and the screen doesn't have to be exposed to the bees, that the bees can still feed the queen from those, from those saw curves. Some of those cages have that curve, and some don't. I'm not bored with this computer doing this, because I'm right in the middle of this presentation, and I was trying to get to a web page that would show this, but I may have to crash out of Camtasia to get this thing to run. In Camtasia, it's this thing we were trying to capture this. On the, there's a very narrow curve on both sides of that bitten cage that cuts <coughs> into the notches. Thank you. This guy, David Cushman, seems to have endless amounts of time. <laughs> He's dead now. Put this stuff on the, on the web, and that rice there, clearly in an Australian <coughs> motif. Here's the, the curve that I was trying to get to when you were saying that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That lets the bees, I don't know why it's doing that. But uh, it's entertaining anyway. <laughs> And just so you know, it did finally load the, the overhead projection screen after I decided I didn't want it. So, I don't know exactly how to handle this. Go to David Cushman. He's, a, he's just, he's got a lot of stuff on the web because I have never seen a page on Queen Cage is so comprehensive. He and this is what had me kind of, one of the things that wired me up. It's a mailing cage from the Czech Republic, nursery cages, 
double width nursery cages. They're the chantry type. <coughs> Uh, the dimensions for all these things, the hair roller, which is the Nikot type, simple and functional, there's two styles of it, Jay-Z's, BZ's cages, I've showed a couple of those, plastic mailing cages, queen guard cages, buckler cages, so he's really spent a lot of time. I used to actually use match boxes. Does match, matches still come in boxes anywhere? Yeah. 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 And the little, and the little match yes. box. Yeah. 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 All right. It makes a great queen box. Put the queen in there, but you got to be careful because she's going to try to get out right away. If you clutch that cage closed, it can be like a guillotine when you crush her. There. <laughs> but at least you'll have your own story to bring to queen beatings the next time we have such a thing. But you just need to crack the least bit on one end, and the bees can get to it. And so, in the old days, when that was a common kind of box, you'd run back to the truck, get under the seat, move all the McDonald cups and all the chains that you'd lost there, and find a match box, and then you could run back and get the queen that you were hiving a swarm from, and then it made it a fairly quick and easy queen box. But I don't, I haven't used that in a long, long time. Pipe covers, you got enough of these? Wow. I'm real happy to see that again. <laughs> All right, I don't know what this box is. And you're going to have to understand the trauma that we all suffered. This was lost in the storm, too. So just let me say that and get on with it each time I have to say it. But it looks like that this was a box that when you would hold bees in, probably in a hive that you're going to instrumentally inseminate or do something with that had emerged. Something to, like you'd also have queen cages inside this box. So when you're rummaging around some old guy's barn who's gone to the home or something and you're trying to decide, you come across odd boxes like this. These things don't have standard names, they don't have standard designs, but, and, but they were always used in some capacity for holding queens for whatever reason. We would get our queens when we, for a while from one of the producers that would come in this citrus bag. I guess so it doesn't get lost in the mail. I guess you have a hard time losing a citrus bag that's mostly empty. <laughs> and so if you get this and open it up, of course, it'd be that shipment there looking like that on the left side. Primarily so that thing would stay expedited and wouldn't get lost. If you show a slide that looks like this that you know nobody has a chance of reading, why are you showing it? Well, I want you to know that if you go to 526, mailable live animals, and you get beyond the quail and the scorpions and the other odd things that people ship in the mail, there's a designated section on shipping queens and bees. And so I was putting this up here to show you that if you decide to really go this full time and you've satisfied all the OSU, Ohio, Ohio requirements, that you, uh, there are requirements from the U.S. Postal System if you want to guarantee live delivery. So I condense this for you into something a little bit more manageable. Go.osu.edu and then DNU uppercase should take you to that address fairly quickly. And I thought, well, that's easy to do. Trying to learn to use Twitter, I'll put this on Twitter for the whole world to see. Boom, boom, got two responses right back. Somebody retweeted, nice job, correct, tedious, but see this if you're shipping queens. And then the other lady said, no bees should be shipped anywhere, anytime. <laughs> you should know better. <laughs> so, didn't mean to offend anybody. It's just the postal system regulation. <laughs> and, uh, I guess she kind of had an opinion on that. And I say she because I've got a picture and everything of her and her name right there. <laughs> Honey bees may be sent by via air transportation, express priority, first class, surface transport post. When sending postal rates, they're very specific about this whole thing, how it works. And uh, only honeybees may be shipped. They go into very specific requirements. <coughs> Alert personnel that these things are coming. Now, in the old days when you ship packages, you weren't required to alert the personnel. They would alert you when the package showed up. Your packages are here. Can you come get up immediately because they're getting out? Well, they're never getting out. It's the whole goes on there. Shouldn't say never. On rare occasions, they did. So I'd never really looked at this, 
Looking at it one time is pretty much enough. But look at it one time, get it out of your system. The U.S. Postal System has a lot of, uh, not, a, not unreasonable amounts of uh, requirements for shipping. And the Postal System has made it very obvious they want to get out of this line of work. They don't want to ship bees or earthworms or quail or anything else along this line. They want to get out of the live organism shipping business. But so far, they're pretty much our only option. You mean UPS or FedEx? We haven't been able to talk UPS into it, have we? Does anybody? Yes. Uh, I get queens from Strikens in California, and they're shipped UPS. OK. I have not, I've never had UPS ship queens to me. They do an excellent job. I don't think UPS will guarantee live delivery. He doesn't think UPS will guarantee live delivery. They will. I know several guys in our area just gotten. We've never had one dead yet. What? What is? And they call you, Jim, and say, "Hey, your bees are here." Okay. One of the speakers, first of March, you know, here the thirty-third. One of the speakers. What? They've been here in. Course of the year, March. Okay. Yeah. She was from Georgia. I forget her name, but she said she was sending her queens, uh, you know, the post I office. That was. And she had a problem. She really had a problem. I don't think she was doing it anymore after the problem that she ran into. Jennifer Berry wrote about that. Is that who it was? Yeah. yeah okay, that's who it was. Was she here? Was she here? The. It was Jennifer Berry? I don't think she was here. In March. One of the ladies that was here. Was she here this year or last year? It might have been last year. It might have been last year then. But I'll never forget. She said she. I know Jennifer very well. She said she'd never do it again. And I'll be working with her again this summer. So, think she was good results. Bad results on the. Yeah, she really had a problem. Because it. And there's there's techniques for claiming for dead bees. Yeah. Just quickly, since everything else has been bright and cheerful, I'll be gloomy and doomy. It's it's a annoying. I don't know how many of these, when you take a $20 bill and give it to somebody to give you a queen, and then after introducing, you come back a day or so later, and there's that queen laying out front. When you stand and look at that queen, I would dramatically drop the 20, but then i got to pick it up, and it's going to go a long way to the floor anymore, so let me just figuratively drop the 20. When you stand there and look at that, and you think, not usually Sunday school words is what you're thinking when you look at that. <laughs> What did I do wrong? Did I do anything wrong? And when people call me and say, what did I do wrong? Well, you know, unfortunately, sometimes it's not anything that they have effectively done wrong. So sometimes these things just don't work. If you thought the U.S. mail thing was painful, the documentation import information into Canada is inconceivable. So having done you a favor, Having this hot link but not clicking on it, we're going to move right along. <laughs> Q cage. We got the Stallman steadfast technique. Why can't we have a Q cage? I took a short piece of PVC or some kind of piping, and I put a piece of screen on this end, and then I used just a common plug to go on the top. I cut a notch in this side that wasn't really required. I made two of these. They were destroyed during what? The storm. The storm. <laughs> so I don't have any of them. Why would I want this? Because it was a one-handed cage. I could snap the top off, drop the queen in, close the top back on, and always have one hand free. I wasn't required to lay down, do anything, do whatever. So even though that worked reasonably well, how in the world are you going to put that thing inside a colony? So all you could do was lay it on top piece of cake to build or made it out of scrap. Just a piece of fiberglass screen the size of a dime. You just put glue on the edge and stick it to the screen and then trim off the screen around it. And then the top would go right on. I just cut the notch in the side for grins. And then you can just sit there, take beeswax and put it along the edge so it's lubricated. And you can snap that top off with your thumb and finger. It worked reasonably well. There's not the two of those in the world. And they're somewhere between here and Erie, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Dana Stallman, a few days ago, a few weeks ago, sold me, gave me, donated to me 10, 15 or so queen cells, and I thought that for five to eight minutes or so, you might want to know how I picked those up from him and how he sent them to me. Dana. <laughs> wow. 
Brain cells are fragile. Uh, they also can be easily affected by weather, uh, temperature. And so Jim called me up and said, I'm coming to Columbus. Dana, do you have any queen cells? Yeah, I've got some queen cells, Jim. Uh, for those of you who know me, uh, we I always grab a lot more queen cells than what I'm actually going to use. If I've got extra queen cells, I'll put two cells into a new, mm -hmm. instead of one cell, to raise queens. But Jim showed up at my doorstep. I don't know what he had in mind that he was going to get, but uh, he knows what queen cells look like. First of all, uh, I have uh, taken styrofoam and um, can you see this? Do we have a queen cell at all here someplace? There was one in there. Well, I've got, oh, okay. Yes, that's all I have. Okay, this is already one that's come out. Uh, I take the queen cell and I just punch it into one of these holes. Now, the way I make the holes in a styrofoam cup is basically I took a rod and heated it. I've got a propane torch and just pressed it in. I, I made a template to, uh, uh, to get my holes all even. Just a three-quarter inch piece of plywood that I drilled holes in. And I just take this hot iron and just stick it down in there and makes it nice and convenient to transport queen cells safely. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem is keeping them warm. Jim was going back to Worcester. I don't know when you put them in the hive, Jim. Uh, the next day, and it was brisk that day. It wasn't a typical spring. <laughs> well, I, I just want to make sure Jim was equipped. I had an old styrofoam box. I, don't, I guess this is a cooler. It could be smaller than that. But to transport queen cells, you've got to make sure that the cells aren't damaged. So this took care of that. I've got a little lid, rubber band. Queen cells go down in here. This goes on top of here. Rubber band goes around the container. Bottles are put into an incubator where they're kept at 92 degrees. Uh, put two bottles of water in here. Put the queen cells down and then take all kinds of cotton. Just stuff into the cooler. And I prayed that Jim somehow didn't stay at his daughter's house too long. I did not. Uh, <laughs> put the lid on and sent them home with him. I uh, did. And Jim transported them to Worcester and... The next I, day I released them that night. The water, the, the box was still warm later that night. But I did dump it out and just kind of... Well, maybe we shouldn't be confessing. I turned the machine off. At least it's not recording. Uh, I did replace it with hot water, you know, nice and nice and warm, just to get them through the night that night. Worked very well. Now I have not gone back and opened the colonies up because the weather has been bad, and I've got these virgins I hope running around. They have not been able to mate, so I didn't want to make it worse by digging around there. Uh, I like Danny's idea better. One of the other procedures I had seen was a guy heats bricks. And so you take your queen cells in a warm brick. And I guess that's an old idea because people used to heat bricks and put in bed with them. So, comment on that. Save your bottles. What about shipping cells with young nurse bees covering them? Uh, Isn't that how Mexico's... Uh, Ship yeah, David Miska ships queen cells, and he has a special box that he ships 24 hours, and you know, you get overnight shipping. And uh, I have never seen exactly what he puts in his boxes to hold the heat, but uh, generally it's been successful. Uh, you can never count on, if you get 10 queen cells, for example, I would say that of the ten, by the time you get them and put them into your nukes and so forth, uh, you're going to be good at 75 percent. Mm -hmm. That goes. I'd be happy at 50, but don't, don't get all gloomy yeah. about that. I mean, they're so easy to produce. You don't have queen nukes and all that kind of thing. And 
So we didn't really push sales that much, but then you cut the development time of, of a replacement plane about in half, and you cut the cost by what? Uh, actually, we're selling the Queens through your program $25 a piece, and the police sells for five. <coughs> Queen is 25 and sales are 5. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so the, the cost is dramatically lower. Thank you, Dana. Mm -hmm. What is this? Mike's out. Who's used one? I haven't either. So I guess nobody in the room has used a Mike Zapper. Uh, you're supposed to put this thing in, apparently. Thank you. And let the bees build on it. They put all this drone comb here. The mites preferentially go for drone comb. And then just when everything's nice and capped over, you plug this in to a receiver unit that it's got. It has two posts on it. You connect it to a battery, and it fries everything in here. And <laughs> kills the drones and the varroa, which have preferentially gone to this frame. And then you disconnect the device, leave it there, and the bees recycle the drone, the drone stuff <laughs> and reuse that in very appropriate ways. Bees that are starving will readily cannibalize their young. So in a way, it's just a food source. So I asked the guy who's manufacturing the mite zapper, could you just leave this in the colony if you actually wanted the drones to live? He was kind of cool about that. Cool. Like C O O L. I said, uh, probably not. Wouldn't recommend that. Not sure why. But he didn't really intend it to be for drone production. But I can tell you that with no wild bee populations out there, or wild honeybee population significantly reduced, that you probably incur the greatest responsibility ever for not just for producing queens for producing drones too. About 26 drones per queen is a rough estimate of what it would expect to take. Somebody probably wisely came up with green being the drone color. So this is drone cell foundation that you can order put this stuff in. You've seen all this. I don't mean to be redundant. So the green stuff is used for producing drones. You buy a drone foundation put it in the colony. This is out in the rain because I haven't been producing drones, so it's got water in it. So it's kind of messy. But you can tell that it's drone cells, but where's the green? Well, they added that later on the top <laughs> with the green marks. So when you see these green marks on the colony there, you have an idea of <coughs> drone cell production going on. Marking. Did it on my thumbnail. Got into a heated discussion on clipping at Piketon. Heated in a friendly way. Does anybody here clip queens? Does anybody here want to clip queens? Well, I had a, a clip queen passionate person at Piketon. That, that thing worked great, kept throwing them on the ground. It's something we nobody does much anymore, but if you want to control the swarm and ideally keep the swarm close to the ground, then just cut off the tip of one of the queen's wings. Most people don't care for doing that because they feel like that a mutilated queen is perceived to be mutilated by the workers and is therefore superseded earlier. I don't have any science one way or the other, but in general, I don't clip queens. Anybody here want to argue? We had somebody piked and wanted to argue. <laughs> I didn't see it coming. Usually you can sense an argument's coming on a particular area. Insecticides or chemical use, but clipping? I didn't see that. So, you want to clip? Have at it. So there's no case of a queen being rejected because its wings were... I don't think... The, well, the queen may be rejected, maybe not. I just don't have any science on that. There may be some old science. But we've seen queens walk around and shorten it a whole way. I'm being accepted, you know, a five-legged queen for a year or two or whatever. So not always will she be rejected because she's mutilated. I've had that experience once for one whole season with them all. And uh, I had several queens that, you know, that lasted a couple more years that were very nice. But uh, one of the things is that uh, they can't fly. They do go back to the hive. And when the virgins emerge, a queen with a queen can't fight with the dam. 
and she loses every time. So, you know, you're going to lose that queen one way or another. There's, why go to the problem? See, here it comes. You <laughs> have <laughs> queen argument. Like you. <laughs> <laughs> You've been fishing for an argument for five minutes. I think you got one. <laughs> All right. General consensus of this group seems to be not to quit. And that was actually the other consensus of the Plankton group, except for one woman who, who was really eager about it. I, I, I don't have the authority to show you this. That's the reason why I've got it. I want to just scorch through it. But if you decide you want to go to the end of the world, Fred Rossman is one of many people here in the country who raise queens commercially. It basically requires a bunch of bees to raise a bunch of queens. So his colonies are all strong. Ironically, commercial bee package and queen producers are not these tall colonies. They're remarkably short because they're raising bees, not queens. So these yards have this look about it, like this, of, t of hives that are fairly short for, in this case, bee production for packages or bee production for stocking nukes. Full colonies, a small hive beetle problems that they have to deal with. These are queen cell producing colonies. These are queen cell building colonies. These are the guys out getting the grafting brood. You see the contraption here in the middle where they can find the queen on two frames so they know right where to go to get those two frames out so there's no looking or digging around for frames. They know where they are. And it's really critical that they keep that on their calendar. And then the results are mature queen cells, one set of frames covered by the queen, by the bees, the other set of frames open. Sexist, go well, around the world, not to offend anybody here, but they get the best grafting success from young women. A lot of dexterity, quick movement, good eyesight, calm, and so that tends to be the persons that they choose if they can, but more often than not, now they can't find people who want to do this kind of work at all. On that, previous, on that previous slide where you had the one frame with bees and one without, we've been told you're supposed to treat the, the queen cells gently, how do you, when you're ready to pull those out and move them to nukes, how do, you, how do you free the frame from all those bees gently? Do you brush them off or? Where was that? You, you just used yeah, the first right. right there. That one. Yeah. Now I'm going to go from the frame on the left. How do, you how, do you, how do you free that frame on the left from all those bees when you're ready to go put those out into mating nukes? I got two minutes before my time is up. Which one of my speakers wants to answer? Joe Kovalevsky, take it Real loud. You can lay that frame right down on top of the, on top of the box you took it out of, and just give them a good smoking, and that will get rid of the majority of the bees off of that frame, and then you can take your bee brush and gently brush the rest of them off if you want to take that frame and put it in your truck or something like that uh, to transport it. But uh, a good smoking gets 95% of them off of it. You get the queen cells, you get it this far, you can get them off. You'll figure out a way. <laughs> nuke yards. Bigger nuke yards. How in the world, how in the world can a queen know that this is her colony right there? What's she going to do? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine? I mean, I have no, I, can, I, I continue to be amazed that queens can figure out why it's not just a random slurry that they just try to find a, a nuke that doesn't have a queen in it. Sometimes they do. It's all just geography to a bee. I mean, there's yep. trees in different places, there's yep. clumps of weeds in different places. You don't have to mark a nuke with anything special. I happen to have seen. 10,000 nukes someplace, and none of them are marked, and they just are oriented yep. in different directions. And it continues to be amazing to me, because if somebody said that I've got to go back and find that same nuke, and I'm doing to you, a smart guy, I'd have to take notes, and, you know, get my GPS system out, stand right here and plug all that in, and yet you're right. I mean, they, they clearly can do it, and have been doing it for a long time. They find their hive in a tree in the woods. Every tree looks the same to me, for the most yeah. part. <laughs> A lot of individual specific work, handling queens. 
marking queens with the window in front of them. So if the queen takes a flight, she goes to the window and they catch her off the window. Uh, these fellows from Mexico do a great job. They're preferential. They know bees. They, they work hot bees in Mexico. So they do a good job of working bees here. And the final product is we're buying queens from people who are producing vast numbers of these things. Queen production industry has changed a lot from the smaller producers to these mega producers that are doing it primarily now. And one of the things Dana and his program is working on is going back and exploring more, again, a small production. So all I was trying to do late in the afternoon was just speak to you for a few minutes, let you know a couple of things. Number one, I deeply appreciate you being here. I'm glad you folks made the cut. A good number of people didn't make the cut. We had to keep it at a number we could, we could teach us to do the grafting work with. Everything hinged around being able to spend time on the grafting. That was the most tedious part. You can do that. If you can sell a bunch. Everything else is just details. I hope you try it. Most of you won't. We're okay with that because even those who don't try it will feel much better about buying good things now from other people. So it's not a loss for you at all. So I appreciate you being here. I've already thanked the speakers. I should do it again, but I think once is enough. I'm deeply appreciative for them, for the staff who have set everything up, and for ATI for letting us use our building at no cost. So I thank them for that. Thank you.